Hello and welcome to the Tips and Nits podcast with Sia and Pip. We're an audio podcast based in Glasgow where we talk everything that is yarny, nitty and fabulous and sometimes we do tend to get a little bit tipsy along the way. Whether you are a new or returning listener, we are delighted to have you here with us and let's get on with the show. Okay, so hello, welcome back. Or should that be welcome back to us because we just like naffed off for like, six months? Oops. Sorry, not sorry. Life happened. Yep. It turns out we actually have a lot to do during a pandemic. Who yep. think? And it turns out um, it's really difficult to record a podcast when you have a toddler going through extreme sleep regressions, therefore isn't napping and isn't going to sleep. So there is no time to record a podcast because there is a screaming baby at all times unless it's like 11 o'clock at night at which point i as a parent wish to sleep and that's just what i do to pip never mind what pip's child does to pip (laughs) (laughs) you said screaming baby that's been my energy this year right up yeah i mean it feels like it's been a uh, the energy of the general like uk to be honest (laughs) <laughs> but like sleeping babies neither of us are drinking alcohol today because the last thing you need when you're really tired is something that makes you feel even more tired cards on the table we recorded this episode six months ago <laughs> and there was alcohol so whilst i'm drinking water th- this evening you can all imagine me sat lounging on the other side of my living room, which none of you know what it looks like, but just imagine me on a couch. Got a blueberry maple sour, whiskey sour, in my hand. Getting merrily tipsy. One might even say sloshed. Bad trolleyed, if you will. Just imagine that, but I've got water now. And yeah. what were you drinking last time? I don't remember. I mean, when you say well, we recorded... Good, then. When you say we recorded this six months... We recorded the first pass at this episode six months ago, and it wasn't quite what we wanted. And we were like, we need to re-record this. And then we never did. And that's fine. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. you won't get the original version, but imagine it. Yeah. I don't even think I've got it saved, so no one even try and pester us, because I'm like, that was on... (laughs) That was so long ago that I think that my computer's cleared itself out since then, to be honest. Um, I've seen it's the last episode. Da, 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 da. Most of the time when we have a lost episode, we do actually get round to re-recording it in a reasonable time frame. This is like the fourth or fifth one of these, but it's fine. This one will just have to go to the mists of legend. People can imagine how eloquent and funny we were, you know? <laughs> yeah. <Ultra. laughs> yes. <laughs> but anyway, we're back. We hope you're all well. We hope the last six months have been kind to you all. We hope you've been kind to each other, yourselves. We hope you all enjoyed the hot weather. We had like five separate heat waves or something. Yeah, so if any of you did choose to knit a bralette the way we initially did, hope you enjoyed the heck out of those bralettes in that weather, because I know I did. (laughs) Yeah. But now it's nearly the end of September and today I had to actually put the thermostat, set the thermostat today. It didn't quite, the heating didn't quite come on. We're about 0.3 of a degree above where it normally comes on. But I'm like, oh, here we go. It's now eight o'clock. It's pitch black outside. The equinox Mm -hmm. is past. It is, as you like to say, Sia, midwest season. Yes. Every single time I ever see the phrase knitwear season, all I can think of is you doing it like lipstick taser. <laughs> it's one of my favourite things about autumn. Yep, same. That and pumpkin spice lattes, but I have not had a pumpkin spice yet. <gasps> and I... OMG. My other favourite things about autumn are my wedding anniversary and my birthday. <laughs> It's all about me, this... God, Pip, <laughs> get in there with the actual sentimental nice stuff. Ugh. Not all that <laughs> basic shite. Well, we were thinking about maybe taking Jay pumpkin picking, but... We'll oh, that would be so cute! It would be so cute, but also it just depends on whether or not we can be bothered driving that far. 
to do it. I'm very jealous of all my American friends who also have kids the same age as Jay who get all these adorable pictures and like the pumpkin patches and so I fully intend on being that basic and getting our own this year. And Jay I mean, would be super interested. You can get me you can get me one as well. I'm sure I'm sure Jay could carry one for me as well. <laughs> well we do have an extra seat in the car. <laughs> But we digress. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Point is, we're back. It's knitwear season. You're welcome. Yep. It's been six months, so there's quite a few projects been cast on and then off the needles in the time since we last spoke to you all. Yep. But we we are kind individuals, and we're just going to give you all a snapshot of what we've done because otherwise, this podcast would basically just sound like a really like yarning list Santa, I guess. Hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. or a checklist and I mean I don't, I'm sure there are podcasts where people read out lists and that's enjoyable to some people's ears but we're assuming that it won't be for you lot mm-hmm. I guess maybe We've made an executive decision that that is not our content if however it is your content message pick and we'll set up a Patreon where we'll just record ourselves listing yarn stuffs <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm being entrepreneurial. There has been no apprentice on BBC One for me to mock and laugh at and feel better about my own intelligence. So this is me pulling out some of that business acumen pit. Yeah, Lord Sugar would be so proud. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sia, what is on your <laughs> needles? Well, you know how I said it, like, whole Snapchat, not going to list things? Mm-hmm. Guess who has empty needles? Ooh! Nice. <laughs> so after all that song, that's actually I'm going to tell you all about. There is nothing <laughs> on my needles, for reasons which we will get into later in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I should have guessed because how many texts have you sent to me and uh, other nitty friends being like, what should I cast on though? But what should I cast on? Help me, what should I cast on? That doesn't sound like me. That does not sound like a text I would send. <laughs> What have you got on your needles? Uh, I still have my Catterline on the needles. It occasionally gets a couple of rows here and there, but I just don't have the brain power at the moment, which is fine. It's it's pretty. It's going to look amazing when it's done. But right now, I just, I just, it's it's chilling, waiting for my uh, waiting for my um, inspiration to come back. The other thing I have on the needles is a magpie tendency in like a bright neon orange and a bright neon yellow. It's going to look amazing. This one's going to have sleeves. Nice. Yep. What do you have off the needles, Sia? I think you've got quite a few, so. I do have quite a few, but I'm trying, I've got my journal here and I'm trying to work out what to actually share because I'm not organised on like Biff and I was kind of like, oh, I'll win them. So I'm pulling out the big guns. I'm going to go and go with a meaningful project because I have knit my wedding shawl. <laughs> I cast it off. Yeah. So I knit the Hecate shawl, which is a pattern by podcast fave Maddie Harvey. Mm-hmm. And it's from winter 2018 pom pom. Wow. And it's just this like parallelogram shaped shawl, mohair, moon motifs all over it so like celestial and pretty so i knit it in a spastrico look which is their merino cashmere nylon base and it was in sort of like a lavender gray color and then the mohair was elia ifilomen leona mohair base in this like creamy pinky ivory color so finished that and it's beautiful and i'm gonna wear it on my wedding day it's so gorgeous these are block actually but it as, as with all of Maddie's patterns, it was really well written, super quick to knit. It's so pretty. Speaking of Maddie Harvey, like Pip, I took part in Maddie's Trig Point MCAL over the spring slash summer. I knit it in some Jameson's Spindrift, I think, and some Cosmic String Sock Yarn. And again, great pattern, 
beautifully written. Enjoyed the MCAL aspect of it. Maddie got me back onto the whole MCAL thing because I did not have faith in the MCAL after being burnt too many times by Mr. Stephen West. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that's a slightly controversial thing to say, but every time I did it, it was a, it was a show that just wasn't me mm -hmm. and wasn't really the style of anyone I could have gifted it to. So it is what it is, Stephen. I'm sorry. But yeah, Maddie, Maddie's trade point MCAL. It's finished now, but seriously recommend it. Mm -hmm. Final project that I would share is another MCAL because I'm all about thematically moving in through things in conversation. And I did the SOSU MCAL over the summer. And I knit it in a metric bucket ton of chromatic yarns. Yarn. <laughs> nice. And it was super fun. But oh my gosh, that shawl is a behemoth. I did feel a little bit guilty because I was the one that spotted it and I was like, oh my god, folks, look at this. This was just when the first clue was up and I was like, look at this. So then a bunch of people started it and then I got like three quarters of it way through it and I was like, this is like big. Each, yeah. it, and it was a lot of brain power and I was like, I've inflicted this on other people and we're all just suffering together. Nat Pip, we're, we're adults. We made the choice. We... <laughs> We, have a, we only have ourselves to blame. You just enabled it. I mean, I enjoyed it. I managed to watch a lot of the new Dynasty <laughs> on Netflix whilst it was on. And managed to injure myself multiple times whilst knitting because, you know, RSI, nerve issues, yada, yada, yada. But yeah, it was a great show. I ended up fudging the end of it because I just could not be bothered. <laughs> Turns out... I love brioche, and even I have a limit, and I found my limit is that shawl. Because <laughs> I remember uh, there was an option to do like a straight edge or like a chevron edge, and I was a bit of ahead of you, and I texted you, and I was like, the chevron edge looks lovely, but you're adding like a hundred stitches a row or something ridiculous like that. And you were just like, okay, I'm, I'm going to go for the straight edge, then that's fine. Oh, I did the straight edge, and I cut off half the brioche on that final clue. Mm-hmm. Because I looked at it and went, I'm done. I was like, Suzanne, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, beautiful pattern. And I would absolutely know the patterns again. But wow. So in conclusion, editing projects, meaningful, mystery. Massive. <laughs> How about you, Pip? Uh, what did you get so, off your needles? So my cozy striped blanket became a cozy striped cowl because... I did that thing where I was like, yes, woohoo. And then I got like a few rows in and I was like, this has completely lost its interest. My dopamine levels have crashed. I do not care. So I just stopped and I sewed it up and made it a cowl and that's fine. And I'll use the yarn for something else. I made a circled two hat by Willy Wormhead and it, it, I love it. I love it. Sideways hat, totally obsessed. I wanted to try it before I made a more complex one. And yes, great. hundred percent. Love it. I made a, was it? Like deep stash, like 2013 stash, deeply wicked from Easy Knits in the potion class. So like purples and greens. I made a ripple bralette by Jessie Mae Designs in my gamer crafting sparkle sock reverse rainicorn. So it's like a dark kind of blue, almost black. It's little rainbow bits and it's sparkly and it's beautiful. And I bought it from Angie like years ago at the first Perth I went to, I think. And it's comfy. It's pretty. I like it. It's good. The Trig Point MCAL by Maddie Harvey. Done that in under uh, Undercover Otter Squish Sock, which I got at EYF. The Sosu MCAL, which I did in three skeins of Countess of Blaze English Gentleman Fingering and one skein of Knit Me Sane BFL and yeah it was it was a it was a slog because you had to really think what you were doing there's this beautiful bit where you're making like triangles of opposite like syncopated brioche and you really have to think about it and it I did like it took a lot of brain power but I love it it's beautiful and enormous and I love it so much and I'm really glad that I did it and it leveled up my brioche beyond like I must have leveled up at least five times knitting that thing and then I went for a much more simple brioche project after that which was the Evremond shawl by KM Bedigan yes and I knit that in some rusty ferret quarantine 
which I got years ago. I was like, this possible, this could possibly not have been named better that I am knitting with Rusty Fair at quarantine <laughs> during quarantine and some knitting goddess minis. Um, so it's like a rainbow. The brioche is like a rainbow, and like it's been in my queue for literally years. Are those the and, minis that I was teasing you about for years? Yes. <laughs> yes. I bought them at EYF in like 2016, maybe? I mean, that's literally been in my queue for years. Like that specific combination have been balled up in a project bag in my queue box for literally years. It looks so, so good. I love it so much. I want to wear it to Pride sometime. Uh, and the other thing I knit was a super quick, super simple hipster hat by Tin Can Knits with it. But I did the brim longer, so it was like a folded brim in some gamer crafting DK in the Bulba colorway. I love it. It was part of my yarn loot. And uh, Angie could literally not have chosen three skeins that are more perfect for me. So yeah, that that is everything that has come off the needles since we last recorded. We've been busy. We have been. You've been collecting some spam as well. Oh gosh, yeah. I'm going to try and keep this one relatively brief as well because this actually will sound like a massive shopping list. Of all my. <laughs> so, okay, my spam. Patterns wise, I don't think I have that much to talk about. If anything, if I were to talk about patterns, it probably would have been the MCAL shawls, to be honest. Mm-hmm. So, reminder go knit the Sosu MCAL and the Maddie Harvey MCAL. Yes. You're welcome. Then, in terms of yarn, I massively enhanced my viola stash uh, through a combination of my 30th and Luke getting a massive final shipment. And I was like, well, the final shipment, so can't not. Plus, it's my favourite base. It's just high twist merino fingering and it's beautiful. What else can I tell you about? I got some gamer crafting yarn loots. Ooh. And Angie sent me two hanks of lace weight Ooh. so i love i love angie's yarn loop because she sends me stuff that i wouldn't necessarily gravitate towards myself so i've got this beautiful sort of like blue turquoisey merino lace weight skin and then i've got one that's sort of like white and gray with little flecks of red so i have no idea what they're going to be but i freaking love them and i can't wait to I can, i'm really looking forward to working out what to do with them because i don't really use lace yarn a lot unless it's mohair apparently so yeah and then had a couple of chromatic yarns knitable roll club yarns because can't not and they have been beautiful as always and i believe hannah has the crit and knit cal starting up soon mm-hmm. first of october so definitely want to take part in that and too because it was super fun when she ran it last year so that's my spam what is your spam pip so i got some lucky dips from for the love of yarn because she was doing a clear out and i got some like beautiful like one really variegated skein one like bright orange and one bright pink and they're all four ply so i'm gonna figure out something to do with those i got some gamer crafting yarn loot because i love angie's yarn and i had a treat yourself moment so I got the aforementioned DK Bulba. I also got DK Pride as a Riot. And then I got a chunky purple skein called Aubergine. And like I said, Angie literally could not have chosen three skeins that fit me better. Bulbasaur is my favorite Pokemon of all time. I love Bulbasaur. We have a giant plushy one. Pride is a Riot. That speaks for itself. <laughs> and Aubergine purple is my favorite color. So yeah. And then Sam and I got taken on holiday to the island of Mull, which is only a couple of hours drive from us. And it was with his parents and grandparents. And it was lovely. It was so nice. So we were getting the early ferry over. So we stayed a night in Oban where I visited the yarn shop. But it's like, it's not just a yarn shop. It's like also, it's like just a general kind of craft shop. So it's full of like, buttons and material and fabric and like patterns and all kinds of stuff and I picked up a skein of DK British Blue it's called by Erica Knight and I've never come across that yarn before but it's a British yarn company I think and then while we were on Mull we were staying like way up right the north end of the island in a place called Dervaig and on Sam's birthday 
We left Jay with his parents. They took him away to the beach and started what I think is going to be a very long-term obsession with the beach for a little man. And we took a drive around the whole island. One of the most beautiful places I've ever been in my whole life. And we stopped in at Ardalanish Will Mill. Lucky. How was yeah. it? It was uh, amazing. Um, you could go in and you, like they've got like a little viewing area so you can look at the big looms that they have, which is just amazing. They were in the process of like switching over the warp, I think. So like nothing was running. They were actually just switching over. And that, she said like that can take a couple of days to get stuff switched over because they're huge looms. So we got to kind of look at that for a little bit. And then their shop is just like, oh my God, I cannot even describe to you. It's like a cave of wonders. I took some pictures that maybe we'll get up on the blog because, <laughs> oh, I was literally just in heaven. And they have a cute doggy too. They have a, they have a dog Aww. who came to say hello and I got to give him pets. So I did buy some Aran yarn because I want to knit the cardigan that girl characters in Pokemon Sword and Shield start with. It's like a beautiful grey cardigan with like some cute diamond cabling. I'm gonna make myself one. I have designed the pattern for it. I'm not gonna release it because I don't know how to grade. I'm just gonna make it for my own size. But I've like designed it and everything is... Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, I can't wait for you to start that pivot. It sounds amazing. Oh, it's gonna be so good. So yeah, I bought some of that. And the other cool thing about Ardalanish as well is it's literally just off a beach. There's like a beautiful beach you can take a wander down to that we did. But they have their own dye garden. Ooh. So like they grow all their own dye plants. And then she was saying that they just pop up all over the place now. So like they escape the dye garden and like are growing up through the cobblestones in the in the yard and stuff. They do go and collect lichen. But she was saying they do that in a super responsible way. Like you only take a little tiny bit from each place and then you never, and then you leave it for 20 years and you don't collect any at all for 20 years because it's so slow growing. So they do it all very consciously of the environment and stuff. But it was just a super interesting place. And I would highly recommend anyone that's on Mull go and do it. We were thinking of going to visit the Iona craft shop. However, by the time we got to Xionport, and stuff we just were so tired that we couldn't face getting on a ferry going to Iona and then waiting and then getting back on a ferry so we didn't go also I'd spent all my yarn budget anyway so I was like what I didn't want to do was walk in there and be like I love this all and then just like not buy anything like be upset that like there was all this beautiful stuff that I couldn't afford which is fine so I was practicing self-restraint so I really want to go back to Mull and we will visit it if, I go, if we go back, we absolutely fell in love with it there. But yeah, anyone that's ever going there, visit Ardalanish. It's amazing. And the other piece of spam is, I'm going to show you this. It's very cute. When we were in Tobermory. Um, oh my God. Isn't that Balamori? Yes, Tobermory like, oh. is where they film Balamori. Oh, yes. Tobermory is so cute. And they have a chocolate shop, like an artisanal chocolate shop. And in the chocolate shop is a gift shop. And I picked up a project bag oh and that is so cool it's it's a design by emma ball and it's a bunch of puffins in color work oh. sweaters oh that is uh, so cute did you got that in a chocolate shop i know i know but we'll make sure i'll, I'll send you a picture we'll put, put it on the blog because it's just too freaking cute oh um, that is sweet but i'm sure if you google emma ball puffins in sweaters it'll probably come up so yeah I, I, do you know what i've been really good for like 18 months when it comes to yarn and all that kind of stuff so the last couple of months i was like do you know what i'm just gonna get some i've been really good you know i've not gone wild it's been nice well, uh, I, you're an adult pip you do you yeah, yeah. I don't think I've got any patterns apart from like the Sosu Cal. Did you not get the Deception Persuasion? Oh, yeah, I did. Thank you. I did. I picked up the Deception Persuasion by Skinanigans, which is like a sideways knit fade jumper, which anyone that follows me on social media will have seen me posting <laughs> that I was making up my like fade set for this, even though I had no intention of casting it on quite yet. Like the dopamine from like choosing the yarns is so strong <laughs> but I think I might cast that on for the knit and crit once I've 
finish my magpie tendency. So yeah, that's that's my spam. And then we try and remember how to move on. Yes. Segment on podcast. <laughs> Uh, something that had just happened at the time we recorded this the first time a lot of people probably know about it now but just so people are aware you can now officially put your pronouns in your Instagram bio if you go to your settings there is an option, you put them in one by one which confused me because I was like putting in they slash slash them and it was like not valid so you put in like they them, theirs, she her, hers as like separate words but then it shows up on your little bio. It's really cool. I love it. So that was a little random aside there that's not really related to knitting. But uh, I thought but it's important would like to know. Yes, it is. <laughs> so yeah, we were going to talk a little bit about how... Inspiration. Yeah, inspiration and how it has somewhat been more difficult to come by recently. Yeah, I think I think perhaps that might have played into us not recording as well, maybe. Mm-hmm. When it's hard to find things that you want to knit in the first place, it's then a knock-on effect of working out how the heck we talk about stuff. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a bit of background for everyone else. I think, like, Pip and I have been talking a lot amongst ourselves and with, like, other else about kind of, like, where we find patterns now, um, especially since Ravelry's... And tossed itself into the sea mm-hmm. and I think over the course of the pandemic I think kind of the online knitting scene has kind of changed particularly like the social media scene mm-hmm. so I think sort of whereas say pre-pandemic you know 2019 2018 you had knitfluencers I want of a better term and you had designers and dyers who somehow achieved like cult celebrity status in a very very scary way we don't necessarily have that now i could be wrong i could be wrong or at least certainly in the circles that we move we are not seeing it as much yeah and i think when you look at dyers and designers and things i kind of feel almost like we're back in 2011 back when i started knitting and at that point, everyone was knitting Stephen West. Like it was kind of like, obviously he wasn't as necessarily the figure that he is now, but it was very much like, oh Stephen West, you know, you've got to knit the boneyard shawl, you've got to try his M cows. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and I feel like now, certainly looking at Instagram and stuff, everyone's doing Stephen Stephen West M cow, and there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that. But when you're kind of looking for something to spark your interest just seeing 400 people on your feed whether you follow them or not who are just posting yarn combinations for this one shawl that you don't want to knit Mm -hmm. and I'm boring (laughs) it kind of feels like you can't go in somewhere and like see all the updates that people are posting about all these different things like it does seem to be that there is a pattern or a number of patterns that become the thing because there's not that just trolling through patterns until you find what you want it's kind of like 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 the sosu mcal i would have no mm-hmm. idea that that was happening until i saw it on my instagram and then i was posting my instagram so then other people that were like oh i didn't know about it. so it feels like now the way that patterns take off is through instagram which means that you and all the f- your friends all start knitting the same stuff and it's it's kind of it's missing that like oh, I'm going to see this shawl and that sweater mm-hmm. and that hat and like everyone's doing something different. If everyone's doing, seems to kind of be doing the same thing at the same time at the moment and it's a bit just like, ooh. But again, I think that did happen before. It's just that you had the option of going on to like Ravelry and being like, I have four skeins of fingering yarn. Let's scroll through patterns. Yeah. And that's what I'm missing, I think. Yeah. And I think... The other thing, obviously Ravelry in the hot right now had its own issues, but I feel like, you know, with Instagram and TikTok, you've got the added battle with the algorithm Mm -hmm. coming through. And I'll know that I'll follow, say, 20 designers. And you can guarantee that only like three of them will show up with any regularity in my feed. Yeah. And even then, if you're releasing a pattern as a small designer and you've only got 400 people following you, people aren't going to see it. Because it's like, you know, it doesn't have the reach. And also, 
it just doesn't have the eyes on it. And I feel like it seems to be a little bit more unfair now than at least on Rav, like you could see the new patterns as they were being posted and stuff. Whereas like on Instagram, you just kind of have to rely on organically stumbling across things. And maybe if you're lucky, like one of your posts will be shared. Or maybe if you're lucky and the reels God grants their benevolence upon you, one of your reels might possibly go viral. But like that's not being seen necessarily by knitters either. That's just being seen by people that probably aren't massively into your content or whatever it's so weird it's yeah it's odd isn't it? and I, f- I really feel for dyers as well because you know i'm sure loads of them have better things to do than trying to navigate instagram reels and trying to get hold of you know like the sounds that are trending and stuff and you know you can't pull things across from your tiktok so you have to make the same thing over and over yeah and that's and time also- that they could spend doing other things on Instagram, you have to make it in the Instagram app. You can't upload into the Instagram. You ha- if you want to go viral or you want your stuff to have reach, you have to film it in the Instagram app, which crashes all the time. All the time. And if you're a business account, you're not allowed to use trending sounds, which I'm just like... Nonsense. Wow. wow. Yeah, I feel like definitely knitting is one of those things that's re- especially yarn dyeing that's going to suffer massively from the pivot to video. And also, I don't want to watch videos. Yeah, I don't want to watch videos. I don't, listen, like, if I want to watch videos, I go to TikTok. Hmm. And I specifically have my sound on. I don't, I don't have my sound on on Instagram. I don't, I mean, pre-pandemic, I'd be looking at Instagram, like, stories and stuff. Like, you know, on the bus, on my walk to work. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't necessarily have my headphones. I mean, obviously now that they've rolled out captions more and people can caption their videos and things, that does help. I love that, like, that's the thing that TikTok in particular made, like, captions normalised, which is just amazing. But yeah, like, I don't, I don't watch... I don't look at Instagram with the sound on. Yeah. It's just... Just a sharing app. It's, it's so weird. Like, everything just feels a bit... It feels like the knitting world that I'm in got a lot smaller... I agree. I feel like things have kind of become a little bit more disconnected. I mean, I think pre-everything kicking off, a lot of people I know made huge use of the groups in Ravelry. Mm -hmm. And obviously that's kind of left a lot of them adrift and without a home. And I know a lot of people, like, you know, some groups have moved on to Mighty Networks, which is cool. I always forget to check Mighty Networks. I forget to ch- I forget to check it, and I know I should I know I should check it more because you know it may maybe over there that's where I'll find you know a wider range of patterns and dyers and designers and you know beyond. And West has done another MCAL. Andrea Maori has released her fourth sweater in this season. And oh, by the way, have you seen these things on these older websites? <laughs> yeah, I mean not not that I am denigrating the work of these people, you know, like. Mm-hmm. they've all worked very hard and they've worked to get to where they are they are very good designers it's just sometimes i want to see someone different <laughs> yeah it's it right like sometimes you just want something that's a different style you don't yeah. necessarily want a traditional fair isle or like cables like you want something that's a bit bonkers or a bit off the wall or like mm-hmm. different really like different yeah, and I feel like that's the other issue, kind of. There was a point where you'd be able to kind of go, oh, okay, all the mohair triples the thing that we're doing now. And, you know, then there was that whole, hmm, is, Bri- is, Bri- is Brioche out yet? Are we bored of Brioche yet? <laughs> and there would be a, t- a technique that was the trend. Mm-hmm. You know, so we had, like, marling and... And I'm not, I, don't, I don't really know what the in thing is anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, I don't know what's kind of captured everyone. Yeah. And I, I feel like perhaps maybe during the last 18 months, people have become more, perhaps more conscious of who they're following. I have purposefully made like who I'm following a lot smaller because I've just, you know, I want to know who. And also there are some people where I'm like, mm, no, oh, okay, yeah. you're not, you're not following COVID guidelines. No, you're not, you're refusing to get, no, like, there are certain things where I'm like, nope, okay, th- no. But like in general, I have 
contracted my follow list down to kind of more people that I want to see but then that means I've lost a big chunk of like what other people were sharing and things but I don't want to interact with as many people anymore yeah and I suppose particular things like you know people who are doing things like spreading COVID misinformation or sticking their test groups on select knitters perhaps or who basically a downright sorry gang i'm gonna swear shitty views you know that's kind of the toss-up but i think not interacting with those people and not giving them the audience and the engagement is probably a good thing Mm -hmm. and i know i mean i've i've frogged projects because i've kind of gone you know what i do not bear that person's ideas on my body yeah the sunset (laughs) byway for me was like a big one like that (laughs) bye (laughs) bye (sighs) But also, like, I mean, people have shown their arse. And I feel like 2021's been worse for it than 2020 was. There's that kind of weird thing where you're like, I have a bunch of patterns by this person, and now it turns out that I find them not someone that aligns with my views. So that's like a whole chunk of my pattern library. Unusable now? It's really weird. It's a weird experience. Yeah, it's like having a folder in, like, amongst your other folders that's basically just like morally bankrupt. Oh, <laughs> <Like, laughs> I mean, am, am I the only person that's sorted patterns that way? <laughs> it's interesting as well to me that we are not the only podcast that is going sporadic. Yeah. I mean, part of the reason we are a bit sporadic is that there are two of us and I'm parenting a toddler and, you know, you've got a job and it's difficult to coordinate but we are not the only podcast that's gone sporadic. And I think, I think a lot of people are probably feeling the same way we are in that there's this weird kind of disconnect going on. Yeah. I mean, I suppose like the absence of podcasts just kind of plays in. No, I'd find out about things mm-hmm. through podcasts. So, you know, beyond like, you know, the old X festivals going on or whatever, you know, you'd have, you'd have interviews with, dyers and designers and you know maybe the other podcasters would be testing yarn and you know (laughs) it was as much educational as it was entertaining and you know really really fun and I guess when we're all kind of going we can't record for various reasons then yeah where do you go yeah I mean I used to follow the Espastri Co podcast Mm -hmm. and that was a experience because it was almost like online shop and being in a yarn shop and I mean it just combined lots of my interests list. <laughs> and it was great and you know I think the beauty of them being a yarn store and a podcast was I'd find out what yarns were kind of the in yarns what was gaining in popularity and interest and like you know what what cool fibers people were starting to spin with or dye mm-hmm. and you get a vague idea of what kind of like the aesthetic with sweaters was going to be. I mean, I say this as someone who doesn't necessarily follow like the in fashions and knitting, but I like to know. Yeah. I like to know if I'm going to, you know, struggling to find sweaters because, oh, they're, you know, skin tight with lace across the nipples. Or if it's going to be, you know, six colour, six colour stranded colour work yokes. And also, I feel like the other thing that's playing into it is, yes, we've now had a couple that have just about started back up, but the place that I always found where I'd be like, oh, look at this new dyer I had no idea about. Oh, look at that pattern. Oh, what are you wearing? Festivals. I miss festivals, but I'm not ready for them yet either. Even if I'd had the chance to go to Yarndale, um, which for us was just this weekend past, I couldn't I wouldn't have gone because like I'm just not ready yet but I miss that because that was where you would see physically on people's bodies what is in or you would see new yarn dyers that you've never seen before and be like oh I need to follow you let me squish that yarn or like yeah walk past and you go oh I love your podcast to someone <laughs> you know like that was to me like that was kind of the beating heart of it yeah, all yeah or like yeah, like conversely, you'd see patterns that came out years ago that you might have discounted at the time, but then you see it in this 
amazing yarn and color combination you go yeah why the heck did i not make that mm-hmm. or you know you Samples. see a pass yeah or you see something that you know just hasn't come your way at all and you're like that is amazing why was this not on the hop right now why aren't more people wearing it that's beautiful mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, and just that like connection that like actual like exciting yes. connection with a person where you're like oh my goodness like we follow each other on instagram hello and like you actually get to meet in real life and i am like the most excitable human being and i'm like i love to feel that energy you excitable that doesn't sound like you pick (laughs) i am like a small puppy (laughs) all the time i've got two modes i've got absolutely painfully shy and do not want to introduce myself because i'm absolutely and utterly like oh no they're gonna hate me i'm gonna be annoying and two hello my name is i'm gonna talk to you for 45 minutes about (laughs) and i interest you in everything all of the time (laughs) that i mean like i mean yes (laughs) i mean that that whole bo burnham special was highly relatable for myriad reasons but that one i'm like that is my brain this is my brain all the time (laughs) but yeah like i miss being able to like connect with someone and then we just like have like a high-pitched conversation for half an hour about like a sweater well i mean like i think one of my favorite memories of eyf was when we met shamika Mm -hmm. and i remember she was wearing this beautiful bright pink sweater yes you know, and I remember that. And Oh, yeah. she's just a ball of loveliness. Like, yeah, I love her. But yeah, just that, that connection. I miss it. I'm not ready for it yet. I'm not ready to go back into, like, a big thronging room full of people. I just, not yet. But I feel like, to me, that's why, I don't know, it feels a little bit hollow at the moment, I yeah. guess. I Like, I'm just missing, there's something missing yeah i mean that's, i mean obviously you know some people have done online yarn festivals and i think that's been fantastic mm-hmm. and you have kind of got little snapshots of it but it has required you to be on instagram or whatever platform they're using and if you've had certainly in my case if you spent half a week on zoom by the time the weekend rolls around you just kind of like i want i want to watch your video but i'll do it next year <laughs> i'll do it next week i'll do it next year and by that point, when you do get around to you, kind of, like, oh, they'll sold out of this by now. There's no point. Mm-hmm. Socializing online is very difficult for me because I'm the kind of person where I need to kind of break off into like small side conversations and come back to the main group conversation, and then maybe break off into and like I constantly, 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 I'm like, oh, did I interrupt? Oh, did I do this? Oh, oh, eh, oh, like totally and utterly second guessing every single tiny little interaction. So, like, I actually find it quite exhausting. I I mean, I think one of the things I found was I didn't have the energy to do role-playing games Mm -hmm. because I found that you're performing being yourself on camera and then you've got to have the energy to perform being someone else on top of that. And I was just like, I have... I mean, don't get me wrong, I've had people call me enough wrong names that I've got enough alter egos to set up a flipping choir. But, like... (laughs) There's only so much energy anyone can have being themselves on camera, never mind mm-hmm. a I, bard that's then impersonating, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just, and the struggle is when it's much. someone new, like if it's your pals, you kind of, everyone kind of understands, but it's when it's someone new. So like I did go to, like Maddie ran Friday night, like Trig Point MCAL groups, and I did mm. go alone to a couple of them, but I was so self-conscious about like not being too excited or whatever that like is difficult so it's funny because like i think when we were kind of talking about what we talk about here it was going to be more like rav is gone type thing but actually like i think there's so many different factors that are feeding into yeah. this at the moment and, and i don't want it to be like a downer or anything it's just more like i guess this is on our minds because like it's difficult to podcast and talk about all this kind of stuff when you're feeling disconnected from what's going on. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, obviously we do talk about there being no rap. And that's not to say that people aren't working on alternatives, mm-hmm. but that takes time. 
I think Payhip are mm-hmm. looking into like basically creating like an online marketplace type thing. Okay. Where instead of just the only way you can find a shop is to follow a link, I think that they are kind of I've seen tweets that like they're gonna look into basically creating where you can search and it'll bring up shops. Which okay. will be I think that will be a game changer. Can I just say, by the way, Payhip are like the most responsive company I have probably ever seen. Yes. Like they got brought up for accessibility and instantly they were like, okay, we are going to see this. We're going to see if we can repeat this issue. What's the issue that you're having? Okay, well, we're going to change this. We're going to update that. Like every time someone comes to them and it's like, this is an issue or this needs to be changed. Like they usually are so on top of it. Like I'm so impressed. And that's how it should, that's, that's how it should be, frankly. Exactly. And they never gaslight anyone about it or say, oh, well, no, I think you're just being hysterical. Like, they're just yeah. like, okay, cool. Good to know that's an issue. Like, we're going to look into it now. And I'm like, yes. Good job, gold star. This should be the bare minimum. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what, though? Having a good natter about this kind of stuff has made me feel a bit better. I think the knit and crit Cal from Corner of Craft, the lovely Hannah, will help because that very much aligns with my interests. And we're getting yes. the campaign three announcement for Critical Role on Thursday. It's not yet Thursday here. And I literally could not be more excited. There has been a hole <laughs> in my life since campaign two ended. Exandria Unlimited, which was their short like eight episode thing, was possibly one of the funniest things I've ever watched in my life. No spoilers. I have loved it so much that I've not finished the end of episode seven. I'm prolonging yeah. it. <laughs> but soon we shall have more Critical Role and I'm so excited. Yes. Get Travis back in my life. <laughs> uh, you need to watch Ashley's one shot, uh, which is an alien. Oh, I've seen pictures. I've seen pictures. <laughs> Man, it's fine. I'm getting married. My fiance is fine, but Travis Williams. <laughs> um, oh, you'll, you guys have to go Google him. Please Google him. He's beautiful. But yeah, like the Knit and Crit Cal, I know that aligns with my interest. I know a lot of people in there are going to be like on a similar wavelength to me. So I'm looking forward to that because mm-hmm. I feel like I'm going to make some kind of connections, like friendship connections out of that. That sounded very like, I will make connections. It's like, no, like I actually mean like friendship connections. So, like, I'm kind of hoping, especially with, like, winter coming in and stuff, we're going to see more of this, like, kind of more community kind of stuff coming up again, which will be nice. Yeah, and I think hopefully, perhaps because we've got more energy, other people will start feeling like they've got more energy Mm -hmm. or brain power, you know, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. I know certainly the other thing for me has been having, like, the mental capacity to do things. To the point that I know I saw, I think it was Twitter I saw, oh, someone was tweeting about watching the same films and TV shows and things, particularly over the last 18 months, because re-watching things is comforting because you know what's going to happen. Yeah. And I know I've done that, but I've also done that with my knitting. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, how many flipping ripple bralettes did I knit <laughs> <laughs> over the last six months? And how many framework bralettes did I knit? And, you know, I've... Mm-hmm. I've I recently knitted a second Balan sweater mm-hmm. and I knit that and it won like last year. Yeah. Like same time last year. And I think it's very, you know, it's, sometimes it's easy just to knit the same thing over and over because mm-hmm. you don't have to deal with choice and you don't have to expend any spoons you might need for something else. Yeah. Just on Google search. I mean, I hate knitting the same thing more than once. Hate it with a capital mm. H. And even Damn. I have done it. Even I have done it. I have knit myself a second ripple brow. I am knitting a magpie tendency. Like, this, I never do this. Like, I don't know what my brain is doing. But, it's, yeah, it's like, I know this is, a, this is just going to go quick and it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like almost I've got the whole, like, evil Kermit meme. And it's like, <laughs> what, what if? You did knit another Drakenfels. <laughs> Actually, maybe I'm just talking about Heather. Never mind the Kermit meme. <laughs> <laughs> Heather is your evil Kermit. This is a yeah. this is a joke uh, in our in our like little knitting group chat. Uh, every time that Sia's like, I need something to cast on, Heather will reply with, 
Drakenfels every time. But have you really considered it though, Stuart? Yes, yes, I have. I've knitted it twice already. I don't need to knit the third one, no matter what I tell myself and no matter what Heather tells me. <laughs> and so help me if any of you slide into my DMs playing like, have you really considered Drakenfels? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do. I, I feel like I've got a weight off my chest. It's quite nice. Like, it's nice to talk about knitting again. And yeah, yarn. it is. And doing things and mm. you know at some point maybe we'll have opinions about needles again <gasps> do you remember when we used to think that knit pros were like the pinnacle of knitting yes. needles because they were into yeah. yeah oh sweet sweet innocent babies <laughs> i know we've been knitting for 10 years this year in so yeah. oh gosh yeah i can't believe it we were babies and now i have a baby that's madness yeah. it's madness <laughs> What a strange note to end the podcast on. <laughs> have, we got, have we got a more normal note to end things on? Um, I mean, I guess this is the point where we'd normally like, did you know that you can enjoy X, Y, and Z because it's coming up? But because we're so disconnected, we have no. So I'm even trying to think that there I'm are like, things to enjoy. Yes, there are things, I'm sure, happening. Hmm. We don't know what they are. <laughs> and that's okay but yeah. like I don't know slide into our DMs and tell us about patterns and stuff that you're knitting tell us what you love yeah or, but but don't slide in too much we've got stuff to do I have a job <laughs> and be a puzzle <laughs> oh. <laughs> maybe don't slide and maybe just not polite and see if we respond I think that was a weirder place to leave it than before <laughs> see ya <laughs> oh <You're> welcome <laughs> well i mean what can we say we're back you say this every time we're back and then it's like another four months we're like uh-oh no we we have, have done an episode i'm proclamating that the word i don't know um we will be back next month we will record an episode in october which will go out in november we will we will do nitty things there will be great yarn. <laughs> Stitches will be stitched. Yes. Yeah. And we'll tell you all about it. Yeah. And then watch our audience numbers drop considerably. <laughs> Do you know what, though? If you've made it to the end of this episode, we all love you all very much. And thank you for listening to our rambling. I don't know if any of it resonated with you guys, because it's, it's certainly what we're feeling. But yeah, it's nice yeah. to have that connection of recording. Yeah, um, and it's nice to be back, and hopefully there'll be a point where we eventually are able to see everybody in person again, which would be lovely. It'd be so nice. I can't wait. But until then, we will just, uh, you know, say hello via the airwaves. And yep. yeah, hopefully we'll see you next month. Thanks for listening. Era. Bye! <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Tipsy Nets podcast. You can find the show notes at tipsynets.com. You can find us on social media, on Twitter and Instagram as at Tipsy Knits, and you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube as the Tipsy Knits Podcast. And if you'd like to, we do have a coffee page, and you can find us at coffee.com forward slash Tipsy Knits Podcast.